And you should see it in the top, it says recording. So let's welcome everybody. Just say hello. 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 All right. Hello, everybody. Woo welcome to the Covenant Calendar Club. And uh, we've, we have that name right now, Calendar Club, because we're a group of people that have come together as, uh, as a group. And so we could say calendar, club, uh, you know, calendar group, or we can say covenant children, uh, or we could say, you know, whatever. But we're calling that for now Covenant Calendar Club, and we're glad that you're here. And um, we're going to be recording this uh, teaching tonight, and it'll be posted on YouTube. Uh, we want to encourage you to share it and uh, post it, and but uh, do not cut it up into pieces and and just take out certain parts and and uh, without express written permission. Um, and you can, uh, if you have any questions while you're looking at any of the Calendar Club teachings, you can uh, uh, send your questions into um, calendar at tourtothetribes.com. And it'll go directly to Timothy and Charlene's help desk, and um, you'll get some answers and um, with references. And I wanted to thank these guys who have put their nose to the grindstone, so to speak, in investigating things um, like calendar. Last week I was elevated a notch. Um, <clears throat> Charlene and Tim had shared the importance of using an everyday dictionary, you know, for and investigate words that we think that we know the meaning of. And in doing that, uh, it's just an added level of, of study. Because <clears throat> oftentimes we'll look up a Hebrew or a Greek word and they'll give us these English words, but we neglected to look up the actual definitions of those words uh, that they use for the definition. And that just adds another level of study. I also want to thank you guys. This is kind of in a classroom setting. So you have a presentation like up on the board and we all get to look at the hard work that you've done. It saves us a lot of time. And, um, and then making those PDFs available for everybody so we can reinvestigate and double check and check and and um, and I'm also grateful that when somebody comes across something that you guys do go back and double check and uh, that's really a great thing so with that I just want to um, I know there's a lot on the plate we had part of, of last week's lesson that we were going to cover I think and then I'm really curious as to how unleavened bread uh, falls into calendar I mean that was kind of a unique, um, what you wrote there, Tim, about unleavened bread and the calendar. And uh, so I want to uh, not take up any much time or too much time and just give the, the, the microphone over to whoever is going to be starting us out this evening. And uh, let's begin with a word of prayer. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Abba Father, we thank you for your Ruach HaKodesh that leads us and that draws us and that teaches us and that guides us. And we thank you, Father, for bringing your body together, uh, a body of, of believers who are willing to keep their eyes open and their ears open as you pour out new revelation or old revelation in a new day. And Father, we, we thank you that you have allowed us to, to enter into a place of study uh, with you and we do this because you first loved us and you've done so much for us and we just uh, want to do our due diligence that we can rightly divide your word of truth to better understand it not just for us but for our children and our children's children and for your entire body we give you the praise the honor and the glory for what you've done and what you're doing and for what you will do and uh, Bashem, Melchizedek, Yehusha, our Kohen Hagadol, and Messiah, we pray. Amen. So take it away, whoever is. So Mar Mario, I'll just uh, have a little introduction. Um, we were going, we were planning to do the second part for Grammar 101 tonight, and then carry on with Unleavened Bread. But as Tim and I were massaging the study for Unleavened Bread, um, it became obvious really quickly that we would not have time for both. So um, we're choosing to 
put part two on hold till next week because uh, what Tim has to present tonight with the unleavened bread and how it's consumed at the Passover festival, um, it is a heavy study and there's about 54 slides or 52 so we don't want to shortcut it. So instead of squeezing two really big presentations tonight, we're just going to um, focus on the one and hopefully focus on it really good. So we didn't um, assign any participants for any slides tonight. Um, we, may, we may call on somebody. Um, but I think for tonight, it would be really good for Tim just to go ahead and, and do the presentation and just pay attention and uh, hopefully we'll have time for questions at the end. So I'll just be helping Tim if he calls on me. Otherwise, I'm here as a participant as well. Okay, Tim? Okay, I'm ready. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I appreciate having Charlene helping me tonight. Um, I am gonna call on somebody to read slides. I, don't, I'm, I can't see your faces once I'm sharing the screen, so I'm just gonna expect somebody to Hit their mic button and start reading for me, please. Okay. Hey, um, Tim, a suggestion. If you want someone to read a slide, there's a lot of beautiful personalities here. If you, yeah. Uh, and since you can't see with your full screen in presentation mode, uh, if you could just say, could I have somebody read this slide? Uh, and the first person with their mic got off, boom, go for it. Um, in the meantime, while he's doing the slide, though, try to keep your mics off for any background uh, noise muted unless uh, Tim says, can somebody read this for me? And then, boom, unmute your mic and first up, go for it. Would that be okay? Great. Okay. By me. okay. Um, this, this study tonight, I rate it uh, probably one of the most important there is in the Dawn series studies of when the day starts. To me, this is one of my favorite studies, not because, not because of what it says in that, but because of how, how incredibly powerful the foundation of this study is. It exposes when the day starts with absolute clarity, uh, and that is deals directly with the statutes of Yahuwah. And uh, I, hope, I hope you guys can re read it or enjoy it. Charlene says it's a, it's a heavy study. I don't think so. I think it's very, very simple. Maybe that's because I've been through it a few times. <laughs> but it's... Try, don't try and make it difficult. Just look, try and look at how si uh, simple it really is. Okay, I'm going to try to do the share screen here, and let's see if I can make it work. Uh, can everybody see it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, hang on. i got to get back to the start here. There. That's much better. Okay, Exodus 12, unleavened bread. Okay, Tim, do you want to put it on your slideshow presentation? Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, I have a question, too. I'm not doing so good with this chat thing. Uh, Mike had put a chat in chat, not able to hear. Um, uh, let's see, where's Mike? Is he gone? Uh, is, I want to make sure everybody can hear okay. Um, so if someone feels like they can go ahead and answer some of those questions in the chat because I'm trying to record the screen here. So I, I can cover the chat, Mario. Okay. And so if someone needs some help, it would be great. Okay. Thanks. Um, Thank you, Sylvia. And Rich. Rich. Okay, I'm looking so I can get my oh, Trying to illuminate my, my mouse. There we go. Okay. Come on. There. And just, oh, this, this screen is in, oh, I got it out of the way. Okay. Unleavened bread consumption schedule. Exodus twelve eighteen under serious scrutiny. References will be from the, the scriptures unless otherwise noted. Would you agree tradition is the enemy of truth? Exodus 12, 18 effectively reveals the chasm between tradition and truth. In the first, on the 14th day of the month, in the evening, 
you shall eat unleavened bread until the 21st day of the month in the evening. This might seem like just a, a normal verse with some, you know, some outline of some things. It may not seem all that important. But when you're about to see that it, the serious foundation that it has is just absolutely astounding, at least in my eyes, anyhow. Charlene, can you read the next two slides, please? <clears throat> yes. There seems to be an appearance of conflict with Exodus 12:18 as we go through this study. And we have some questions regarding this conflict for the following scriptures. And, and you'll see that Exodus 12:18 is there at the center. Um, as I went through the PowerPoint, I was realizing that, um, or the study, I was realizing that Exodus 12:18 seems to be the controversial verse with a conflict with uh, Exodus 12, verses 15 to 16, Exodus 13, verses 6 to 7, and Leviticus 23, 5 to 8. We'll be doing all of these scriptures. But the first question is this. Is the command to eat unleavened bread for seven days, or is it for eight days? The second question is, what is the festival content for Exodus 12, 18. Now, I know you won't understand that right now, but just remember, what is the festival content? Is it talking about Passover? Is it talking about the Unleavened Bread Festival? Or is it talking about both? Question number three. What would be the cause of this conflict? I know you don't know what it is yet, if, unless you go back to question number one. The conflict is, are we eating unleavened bread for seven days or eight days? That's the conflict. Uh, number four, is the conflict, does it have anything to do with the sunset day? Or does it have anything to do with the day commencing at dawn? So these are some of the questions we'd like you to remember, if you can, as we go through the um, study tonight. So we're just going to look at a summary of the scriptures. Uh, we will be actually reading the scriptures later, but for Exodus 12, verses 15 to 16, this is a summary of what you'll have in those verses. You're supposed to eat unleavened bread for seven days. The first day and the seventh day are holy convocations, so that's talking about the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And if you count the days for eating unleavened bread starting at the 15th, you can count them on your fingers. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. So that's a little bit of the content for Exodus 12. When we look at Exodus chapter 13, verses 6 and 7, it's telling us that the Unleavened Bread Festival is for seven days. It tells you that you're supposed to eat unleavened bread for seven days, and the count is given for seven days. Both of them are seven days. When we look at Leviticus chapter 23, verses 5 to 8, it tells us this, that Passover is on the 14th day. The 15th day is the first Sabbath of unleavened bread. The 21st day is the second Sabbath of unleavened bread. And it tells you that you're supposed to eat unleavened bread for seven days. So when you do the count from the 15th to the 21st, it should add up to seven. And then we have Exodus 12, 18. And the content is, there is a Passover sacrifice. It tells you it's on the 14th day at even. It tells you to eat unleavened bread that night until the 21st day of the month at evening. And now if you do the count for the days of eating unleavened bread, and use your fingers if you have to, 14, 15, because 14 is Passover, 15 is the first Sabbath on the unleavened bread, then we have to go to the 21st. So we have 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So what happened? In this scripture, we are counting eight days of eating unleavened bread, and the other three said seven. So we are going to look at this conflict and see how it's going to be solved. Is sunset going to solve it, or is the dawn day going to solve it? Um, did you want me to continue with this one more slide? Yes, go ahead, Charlene. 
Okay, so just a summary of the count for eating unleavened bread. It's the same three scriptures. Exodus 12, the count for eating unleavened bread in that scripture said seven days. In Exodus 13, verses 6 and 7, when we read it, the count to eat unleavened bread says seven days. And in Leviticus 23, it's the same thing. The count, it says seven days of eating unleavened bread. And then we come to this conflict. In Exodus 12, verse 18, it's talking about eating unleavened bread for eight days. So it appears that there is an incredible conflict here. And this is what the study is about tonight, to massage these verses and see if they can come into um, an agreement and if we can have an answer at the end. So Tim is going to take it over. There is a, thank you, Charlene. There is a time to eat, a time to praise, according to Exodus 12, 18. Yahuwah has determined very specific times for observing in his Moedim. Do man's traditions align with his set-apart appointments? Have you considered the idea that there might be more to the full Passover festival than just eating unleavened bread for seven cycles, as we have been taught for many years? Is there the possibility that we have been missing something big in our current worship traditions? If, on the final atonement day, you are accused of removing one worship cycle or preventing Yahuwah from receiving worship from one or more statute requirements, what will your answer be? Do you know what the scriptures declare about Yahuwah's unleavened bread consumption schedule? Okay, this next word's down here. This just explained in this study the, the reason why you'll see the word cycle. I, the Hebrew word is yom that's been translated into day. And through, our, through Charlene and I's uh, experiences in the past, people have a different or difficult problem with the word day. Some think that it uh, means 12 hours. Some think it's 24 hours. And there seems to be a lot of confusion and, mis and mistaken, uh, I, or mistaken thoughts on this line. So what I've done is I've used the word cycle, and that identifies a 24-hour period. There's no confusion whatsoever. So when you see the word cycle, think 24 hours. Understanding important definitions. The 24-hour cycle is further defined to pinpoint two seasons. First one is cycle. 24 hours containing the two seasons of light, H216 or and night, H3915 Lael. Number two is the season, H6256 Ith, and it has 12 segments of time, whether it is in the light season or night season. Jeremiah 33, 20 to 26 uses the terms day season and night season. Jeremiah 33.20 Thus saith Yahuwah, if you can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night, that there should not be day and night in their season. And verse 25, Thus saith Yahuwah, if my covenant be not with day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, then will I cast away the seed of Jacob and David my servant. Does this sound like a serious covenant? The focus of this study, what time of the 24-hour cycle is it in this picture? And I'm, I'm asking you directly, you have, have a look at this uh, beautiful, colorful picture in front of you. Is this the morning twilight, the mixture of light and darkness? Or is it the evening twilight, the mixture of light and darkness? Is it the light season of the cycle with, it, with the direct sunlight? These are the questions we're going to be looking at in this study. To be sure we are all on the same page, consider the following graphic as given in Genesis 1. 
This must be understood for our study on the days of consumption for unleavened bread. First, an Arev review. Now, some of you that were on this uh, panel before will remember we've been through the word Arev before. So we're going to review. And if you look down at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a Hebrew lexicon, and this is by J. Parkhurst from uh, 1762. And this particular lexicon does not use the Masoretic vowel points. Okay, back up here. Erev, evening. Mix, mingle, mingled, mixture, mixed multitude. Mixers, mixed ones, mixed together. The heavens or celestial fluid consists of this mixture. To be darkened. Dusty, dusty, obscured. Ben ha RBM. Remember now we've gone over this term just in one, in one study. And it actually means between the evenings, or more literally, between the mixtures. At sunset, where the cool dark air mixes, or night air mixes with it. So the basic meaning, the foundation of, of this word erev means a mixture. Does anybody uh, not understand that? So, uh, so far, so good. Okay. Please be sure you understand this graphic before moving on. And if you don't understand it, please stop me and ask me about it some more because this is important to understand. The outline of light and darkness according to Genesis 1. Volker. And shakar is also another word used for this particular time of the day, which is dawn's first light. Boker, which is the word for morning, and the description is a rev, the twilight mixture. There's your sunrise. There's your direct sunlight rays. That's when the sun is directly in the sky. There's your sunset. There's the evening Erev twilight mixture. Darkness. There's your 24 hours with the boker at dawn, and that's where the new cycle starts. Can There's I ask a question? Certainly. Okay. I've always... Um, Understood that boker meant morning. Are you saying that it means dawn? Uh, no, boker means morning. It's the general part of the morning. But boker, boker is, it begins with the very, very first light of dawn. And that's also described by the word shakar. And it's the, one of the definitions is the eyelashes of, of, uh, of light. Okay, I, I do understand that, but when you say the word boker, it generally means morning to most people, and that generally goes from when a person gets up to about noon. You always, you will always say good morning to someone, not good afternoon or. Yeah, that's that's fine. But when did it start? Well, I understand that it starts at um, dawn, if you will. Yeah. Very, very but, first light. But that's not the word used, is it? What's up? And what isn't it evening and morning, day one? Yes. It's not evening what? and dawn. No, it's Boker. Okay. Uh, Tim, can I just um, add a comment here? Certainly. Uh, when, we're look when we're looking at Genesis 1, and we're talking about the very first definitions. That first definition for morning is the first light of dawn. It is, it is not talking about the morning hours from sunrise to noon. So we're going back to our first definitions. And this is part of your um, hermeneutic rules and principles that you want to remember. When we're talking about Genesis 1, we are going back to the first definition. Yes, there will be times in the scripture where morning will mean like mid-morning, 
uh, like a mid-morning sacrifice, let's say that, but not in Genesis 1. We are talking about our first definition. Maybe that helps a little bit. Um, can I ask a question too? Is the word boker used in Genesis 1? Yes. Yes. Okay, so is it uh, the same as Rev, or is it a different word? What, what was that, Mario? Uh, are Rev and Boker uh, inter, uh, inter uh, are they as the same word? Uh, no, you will not see a Rev in Genesis 1 for, for the morning time. It, um, a rev just means the mixture, and uh, in Genesis one, you will see a boker for the very early morning. Okay. So, um, the, our down here in the lower left corner, our focus: which light entity changes the twenty-four hour cycle for Yahuwah? Is it dawn, or is it the sunset that is going to change? Our 24 hour cycles. That's the whole purpose for this study that we're doing here today. The primary question for this study about unleavened bread is to find the divine guidelines for when and how long unleavened bread is to be eaten. Will we see support for the sunset theory system of determining time or? Will there be a foundation for the format of Yahuwah's dawn design? This will be examined so everyone can make an informed decision. Let's begin by viewing some texts from Exodus 12 and 13 about unleavened bread. Is there somebody that would like to read this for me, please? The primary question for this study about unleavened bread, hold on, I got a primary study, primary question for this study about unleavened bread is to, and my little thing is blocking those last two words, uh, divine guidelines for when and how long unleavened bread is to be eaten. One, we will see support for the sunset theory system of determining time, or two, there will be a foundation for the format of Yahuwah's dawn design. This will be examined so everyone can make an informed decision. Let's begin by viewing some text from Exodus 12 and 13 about eating unleavened bread. Exodus 12, 15, seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, and from the first day you shall utterly remove leaven from your houses. Whoever shall eat leaven, that, that soul shall be utterly destroyed from Israel from the first day until the seventh day. Exodus 13, 6. Six days you shall eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day is a feast to Yahuwah. Exodus 13, 7. Seven days shall you eat unleavened bread. Nothing leavened shall be seen with thee, neither shall thou have leaven in all thy borders. Thank you, Sylvia. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty clear from these verses we're talking of seven days for eating unleavened bread. Quite clearly, from Exodus 12 and 13, unleavened bread is to be eaten for seven cycles. There is no mention here of other cycles for eating unleavened bread. However, this will move into an interesting situation. Further, in Exodus 12, it appears as if there is a totally different number given. How about checking out Leviticus? Would someone like to read Leviticus for me, please? <coughs> I got it. Okay. In the first month, on the 14th day of the month, between evening times, is Yahuwah's Passover, Leviticus 23, 6. And on the 15th day of this month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread to Yahuwah. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Have you ever noticed that there are two festivals with two separate feast dates? Wow. Have a look at those dates and let that sink in for a bit. <laughs> okay, we're going to be comparing Leviticus 12.6 and Exodus 23.18. Leviticus 23.6. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto Yahuwah. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. 
and the account is seven cycles. Exodus 23, 18. In the first month, on the 14th day of the month, at even, ye shall eat unleavened bread until the one and twentieth day of the month, at even. There's your eight cycles for eating unleavened bread. Now, this looks like a, a, what people call a biblical contradiction. Is it? Let's look at it. Let's look at it closely. If you are accustomed to observing Passover by sunset to sunset standards on Abib 15 night, please consider the separate festival dates for the moment. At this time, we will concentrate on the message of seven days for eating unleavened bread. Exactly when and where does this message apply for the eating of unleavened bread, a total of seven days? Why have many of us been taught to observe Passover in the Sabbath night season of Abib 15, which is counting that time as part of the unleavened bread feast, and... Where can we find a scripture instructing this message? It cannot be found, for it does not exist. If, it, if anybody can show me in the scriptures a place where it tells us that we are to observe Passover on Beat 15, I would dearly like to see it, because I have not been able to find it to date. Can someone read this for me, please? I can. Thank you. Okay, Exodus twelve sixteen, And in, in the first day, there shall be a holy convocation. And in the seventh day, there shall be a holy convocation to you. No manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. The question, what feast is verse 16 talking about? Passover or unleavened bread festival? Uh, second question, is the Passover festival a holy convocation? There is no scriptural support claiming Passover as a holy convocation or a Sabbath of any kind. However, in Leviticus 23, 7 to 8, there is information affirming the festival of unleavened bread has two holy convocations. Um, Strong's number H, 4744, uh, Mikra, on both 24-hour cycles at the beginning and ending of the festival. Therefore, Exodus 12, 16 cannot be referring to the Passover festival night season as the first day of consuming unleavened bread. Instead, Exodus 12, 16 is referring to two Sabbaths. The first Sabbath is the commencement point for the consumption of unleavened bread. This point is serious and will become extremely important very quickly. Thank you. Questions? Where do the scriptures provide the distinction between the orders to consume unleavened bread during the festival of unleavened bread and the feast of Passover? Will the separating distinction of unleavened bread consumption allow for the individual feast dates of Passover and unleavened bread to collectively indicate a total of eight cycles for consuming unleavened bread? According to Exodus 12, 18, important. Can point, can point number two, which indicates eight cycles for eating unleavened bread, be substantiated from the scriptures? Will this scripture also enable us to fulfill all the required statutes for eating unleavened bread during the two festivals? And here's the 18th verse again. In the first month, on the 14th day of the month, at even, ye shall eat unleavened bread until the one and 20th day of the month at even. And if you want to count in your fingers again, like I do, count from the 14th to the 21st. And that will give you eight cycles. How many cycles are there? Counting from the 14th to the 21st, there's eight. Where else do we read of eating unleavened bread on the 14th of the month? The first scriptural instruction for eating unleavened bread is found in Exodus 12.8, and it is very specific. Exodus 12.8. And they shall eat the flesh in this night, 
roast with fire, and they shall eat unleavened bread with bitter herbs. Oh. Unleavened bread was to be eaten that night, not in the light season, but after the sun had set and the darkness had begun. Question. For the time in context, up to this point in chapter 12, what single cycle of the month has been indicated? Exodus 12, 6. And it shall be kept by you till the 14th of this month, and all the multitude of the congregation of the children of Israel, Israel shall kill it toward evening. And review in verse 8 again. And they shall eat the flesh in this night, roast with fire, and they shall eat unleavened bread with bitter herbs. And I'm hoping everybody is noticing very, very intently the arrows that point to the 14th and point to in this night. It makes it very, very clear that Yahuwah does not want us to be eating Passover on Abib 15 night. But I didn't say that. We'll just save that for later. <laughs> yeah, who is 24 hours of Passover? There is your dawn. There is your Arab twilight mixture that comes right after the dawn, just before the sunset. There's your sunset. There's a bead 14 light season. There's your sunset. And there is the, the second mixture, the Erev Twilight mixture. And you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. Then all the assembly of the congregation of Yisrael shall kill it when? Between the, evening. Between the evenings. That makes so much more sense. Yes, I, I think it makes a little more sense lamb right at dusk and try to get it cooked and eaten and everything before midnight. I mean, that was always my contention. Yes. Many people have that question. Trying to do that. Oh, there's yeah. your Abib 14 night that's season. That's why they push, that's why they, they talk about the afternoon. Yes, that's why they they want to tell us that there is a twilight mixture of light and uh, light and darkness in the afternoon, and that cannot be substantiated from the Hebrew language. Okay, in the bottom left hand corner, Exodus twelve eight, and they shall eat the flesh on that night, Abib fourteen, roasted in fire with unleavened bread. And with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Now, everybody's probably wondering, how come I'm doing so much repetition? You're going to see. It's because, coming. Because we need it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've already told you my story on this, so. <laughs> with the last graphic of Passover in our mind, Let's look at the festivals and see if this format can accomplish fulfilling eight cycles of eating unleavened bread as it is written in Exodus 12, 18. Okay, I ask you to pay very, very close attention to this chart. And please, if you do not understand it, I'll go over it ten times for you if need be. There is cycle number one, Abib 14. Passover eaten on that night, roasted in fire with what? With unleavened bread. Cycle number one, Abib 14, plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There is your seven days of unleavened bread. So we we add Abib 14 to these seven days. And what do we get? Eight. We have eight cycles of eating unleavened bread. Exodus 12, 18, 21st day of the month, in the evening. That's when we, that's, that's the point where we cannot, or where we don't have to eat unleavened bread after that. 
not by command, anyhow. Our scriptures reveal an eight-cycle schedule for consuming unleavened bread during the Passover and unleavened bread festivals. This schedule is easily achieved when abiding by Yahuwah's dawn start of the day format from creation. Is there anybody that does not understand this, this chart? Nobody. Okay, yeah. I'll take that as I can continue. That's, a, that's awesome. Okay. No, actually, I couldn't get to my mute button quick enough. <laughs> okay. you. Okay. Uh, go ahead. But what I'm looking at is that's not a full cycle, though. If you're starting from a B to the 14th and you're ending on the 21st on the evening, wouldn't it go from evening the 14th, evening of the 14th to the 15th evening, which is one day, to 16 to 17, 17 is, or 3, and then that makes 7, because that'll be a full 24-hour cycle. If that first day, the 14th, is not a full 24-hour cycle. When does the day start? The day starts in the morning. Yes, so that is a full cycle. That is a 24-hour period. Right, from the evening of the 14th to the 15th is one full cycle. No, no. The day starts at dawn, and it ends the next dawn. So the, the, uh, the Passover day starts at dawn, Abib 14, and ends at dawn, at which time Abib 15 commences. That is counted as one complete cycle. But the eating of the unleaven starts in the evening when you eat the Passover lamb. Yes, but that doesn't change the day. No, but what she's trying to say is you start the night of the 14th with your unleavened bread. It doesn't change technically when a morning starts, but if it's a full 24-hour cycle of eating the unleavened, and he's telling us that we start eating that unleavened, in the evening, when we eat the Passover lamb on the 14th, then to have a full 24-hour cycle for unleavened, it goes to the 15th of the evening. doesn't change the fact that the day starts in the morning, but it's a full 24-hour cycle, which would give us seven full 24-hour cycles from the evening of the 14th eating unleavened bread till the evening of the, the 21st eating unleavened bread. So then why did he cut it off at evening on the 21st? I have I can. If the say, if he's saying we eat unleavened bread for seven days, and it's he's if he's talking about seven twenty-four hour cycles, on the twenty-first and that evening would complete twenty-four hour cycles. It doesn't it doesn't change when a day begins or that Passover begins between the evenings, but the beginning of the eating unleavened bread for seven days, seven twenty-four hour cycles would go from the evening of the fourteenth to the evening of the twenty-first. Um, I don't. I don't think the scriptures say um, eight 24-hour cycles. It says for eight cycles, eight days, they're eating unleavened bread. But the scriptures don't say for eight 24-hour cycles. That's very true, Sue. And I was about to read, uh, read it from this Hallelujah Scriptures, Exodus 12, 18. In the first... On the 14th day of the month, in the evening, you shall eat unleavened bread until the 21st day of the month in the evening. It gives us two dates. It doesn't declare that it has to be 24-hour periods. It gives us when the date that we're supposed to start and the date that we are supposed to end. It says nothing about uh, spacing 24-hour periods. Now, you're going to, I'm going to go farther on, and you're going to see the answer or some answer or some more insight into what you're questioning here right now. But it's going to, I've, got to, I've got to continue on to, to expose this. Um, can I say something? What's up? The days, um, those festival days for um, unleavened bread, the festival days for unleavened bread, um, those are the separate, those are the separate festivals. You count that time. You lay that out. All right, the festivals are breaking really off. bad, Wendy. I can't understand you. 
Uh oh, next one. Sorry. Uh, I don't know what I can do. Uh, try again, Randy. Okay. Um, for my studies, there's two different there's two different vessels. Some of the vessels start on unless unless otherwise um, stated, start from sunrise on our on the daylight calendar. And there are some vessels that are dedicated and he, he sets out a different calendar and those are separated separately. So the I'm not bad. Okay, so so if yeah, we're okay, understanding um I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to go with you, Randy, on on um, uh, making out what you're saying because your mic breaks up just a little bit. So I think what what Randy said so far is that from his studies that he recognizes that these are two separate feasts, and uh, that uh, Passover on the 14th and the unleavened bread starting on the 15th. Uh, is that what you said so far? Yes. Uh, uh, Randy? Can Randy provide that chat? We're breaking up really bad here and I can't I can't understand. So please uh, let me continue because this your answer is yeah. going to come farther on in the study here very fairly soon. Okay? Can Randy put that his question in chat? And then we could look at it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. That might help. Um, um, I think it's his microphone. Okay, I, I can't really hear what's going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to continue because I know there's the answers are coming further on in here. And we do have time at the end for question and answers. The chart you have just seen is a timing format based on the very words of creation as recorded in Genesis 1. Next, consider the tradition most of us have been taught for many years and see if the traditional system will also allow complete fulfillment of the Passover statutes in Exodus 12. The traditional system labeled as sunset theory starts the cycles of the week with the sunset moment. Sunset has an inherent problem with identifying the correct time of evening. The word erev is the Hebrew word deficiently translated as evening. The base definition of this word and its root word is mixture, mixing, to be mixed. When the word erev is applied to time, it designates times of the 24-hour cycle when the indirect sunlight begins mixing with the darkness as in the evening twilight. In the morning twilight, the mixture of darkness decreases with the light until full direct rays of light are exposed. In the late day twilight, the direct sunlight is gone after the sunset and the darkness takes dominant rule. Facts about sunlight. The only time when indirect sunlight can be seen in the 24-hour cycle is either just before sunrise or just after sunset. Note, the mixing of light and darkness cannot occur while the sun is vis visible in the blue sky. Therefore, erev, evening mixture, cannot occur when the sun is visible. Let's look at a graphic to be sure we understand this fully before we continue with our study in the scriptures. And this is just a review. This is your twilight mixture area here. It comes after the dawn. This is your light and darkness mixture right here. And then comes sunrise. When the sun is in the sky in your direct sunlight rays, there cannot be a mixture of light and darkness. The only time darkness can arrive again 
is when the sun has gone out of its out of our, our vision and the darkness can then begin mixing with the light creating a twilight situation and then it becomes night so our focus again is which light entity dawn or sunset changes the 24 hour cycle according to yahuwah why are we looking so intently at the twilight mixtures of the cycle? Because it is the sunset ushering in the evening twilight that is going to indicate to us Yahuwah's true word. Question. What effect can the sunset possibly have on Passover and the statute for the eating of unleavened bread? Answer. Answer. It will determine if you observe the Passover according to Yahuwah's will or if you choose to cling to tradition. Questions. What happens to the eight cycle unleavened bread count as seen in Exodus 12 18 when utilizing sunset to determine changing cycles of the week? Will sunset determination support the scriptures? Or will it destroy the possibility to fulfill Yahuwah's statutes? Wow, that's a heavy question. Yeah, it's a, it's a very, very serious one. As you probably noticed, the previous graphics were formatted with dawn twilight commencing the cycle. We will now look at a graphic that has sunset changing the cycle of the week. In turn, declaring the night season arise before the light season. Please allow me to state quite emphatically this simply cannot be supported from the scriptures and quite specifically not from Genesis 1. Let's look at it specifically for comparison purposes only. We will be considering three sunset options. And here's a preliminary question or, or two. Okay, if you look, look down here in the corner, this is the sunset theory type of day or type of 24-hour period. Here's your sunset. This is what changes or this is what is declared to change the day. Is your sunset and your twilight, your night, your rev twilight, and then your sunrise, and then the light season. This is a typical sunset theory day. And the question I ask you, where are ha Arbeim, the Arev mixtures, in this depiction of Abib 14? Your first one over here on the left is your twilight mixture after sunset. Where's your second one? Morning twilight mixture comes before sunrise. So I'm going back up to this question up here. Where are the ha RBM Erev mixtures? In the night season. Yes. Is the Passover lamb to be killed ben ha RBM between the sunset to sunrise Erev twilight mixtures? Because we know in the scriptures it says, and I believe it's uh, verse, or Exodus 12, verse 6, uh, oops, no. Yeah, it is verse 6. I'm going to read it to you from the Hallelujah Scriptures. And you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. Then all the assembly of the congregation of Yisrael shall kill it between the evenings. Now, that, that uh, between the evenings is Ben Ha RBM. We are commanded by Yahuwah to kill the lamb between those two twilight mixtures. So I'm asking you to please take note of the, of the uh, portion of the 24-hour period that is directly between those two mixtures. Would Yahuwah ask his people to kill Passover lambs at night? Anybody have a thought? 
I would say no. I've tried to do it before. <laughs> okay. There's a, there's a serious safety factor here, especially when you consider the hundreds of thousands of lambs that have to be, or that had to be killed in the tabernacle at night. Does that make any sense? It doesn't to me. Okay, here is uh, sunset theory and the lambless Passover, option number one. And I'm going to show you why I call it the lambless Passover option. Sunset changes the cycle from Abib 13 to Abib 14. There's your evening twilight mixture. So right here is, uh, is Abib 14. On the other side is Abib 13. The sunset happens, and it's declared that it's now Abib 14. The Passover meal is eaten with unleavened bread that night. Then comes morning Arev and the twilight mixture. Then comes sunrise. Then comes Abib 14 light season. And the sunset is when a new cycle starts, supposedly. The Passover lamb was to be killed between the two twilight mixtures. Now, it was, if we go by sunset theory and we apply the scriptural command, then that lamb would have to be killed back here someplace. But yet they had the Passover meal right here. Now, consider the problem found on the next slide. Again, this is option number one, slide number two. Again, your sunset theory day. Exodus 12.6 commands by statute that the Passover lamb was to be slain between the two twilight mixtures. Where are the two twilight mixtures of this Abib 14? In the night season. Or on either side of the night season, I should say. Out of the hundreds of thousands of Israelites, how many were able to slay their lamb in the tabernacle and cook it before they could not see for the darkness. Okay? Here's, here's where we, supposedly they would have to be killing the lamb. The last scenario saw them slaying and cooking the lamb in the darkness of the night. Is this really logical? On another note, we have been taught that the passive over lamb must be slain in the ninth hour or 3 p.m. on our present clock to the sixth hour. This option has way too many lambs being slain at one time at the tabernacle for this to be remotely possible. Plus, add the time for roasting the animal before the Passover meal on the evening before it does not make any sense. Hundreds of thousands of Israelites slain the family lamb in the temple, as per statute requirement, within a three-hour window before sunset ushers in Abib 15. Let's see if we can chart this information for option number two. Sunset theory and the lambless Passover, option number two. Again, sunset change changes the cycle from Abib 13 to Abib 14. Here is your evening Arev twilight mixture, Abib 14 right here. The Passover meal is to be eaten with unleavened bread that night. And you read that in verse 6. Uh, no, actually, I got that. I need to change that. It's verse 8. Charlene, can you note, uh, note that for me and write that down so I can change that? Yes, we'll do that. Thank you. And <clears throat> Abib 14, dark, uh, night season has passed, and here comes the morning twilight mixture. Here is their sunrise, and Abib 14, light season. The sunset is a new cycle, or the new cycle is starting way over here. 
problem. The lamb was slain 18 hours after the Passover meal. Okay? Because in verse 8, and I'm going to read it for you from verse 8, and they shall eat the flesh on that night, that's to be 14, roast in fire with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. So for them to eat the, the Passover lamb on a deep 14 night, it had to be between here and here, somewhere. But yet, the lamb was not to be slain until the, uh, the, the ninth hour, or 3 p.m. as we understand it. That's what we've been taught. So how can they, how can they slay the lamb here, observe Passover, prior to, to slaying the lamb and have an authentic meal. If they had lamb flesh at this Passover meal, it was not authentic Passover lamb because the Passover lamb was not slain until many hours later right here. So your sunset theory day has got an, an extremely, extremely serious problem if it wants to abide by the statutes of the scriptures. Passover lamb was to be slain at 3 p.m., yet the Passover meal was approximately 18 hours earlier. Where did the lamb's flesh come from? And another question was, did they even have lamb at the Passover meal? Because the lamb was still on its feet walking around at, at this time of the day. Okay, sunset theory and the Abib 15 Passover meal. Again, we're going to be looking at a sunset theory day. Option number three. The lamb is slain at the ninth hour from dawn, 3 p.m. Sunset starts a new cycle. Passover meal is eaten on Abib 15, Sabbath night of unleavened bread. You see this? The sunset changed Abib 14, right here, to Abib 15. That is what is declared by the sunset theory system. But Exodus 12, 6 says the 14th. And in verse 8, Yahuwah commands the lamb to be eaten Abib 14. So how can they slay the lamb here and go by scriptural command and eat the lamb earlier than what it was slain. It just does not make any sense. It cannot be. You cannot go back in time. And as I said earlier, back here on Abib 14 night, that lamb was still walking on its four feet. We will not go into details, for it will soon be seen how absurd this proposition is in view of Yahuwah's statutes. With the three options we have just examined, Yahuwah's statutes must declare two separate dates, Abib 14 and 15 for these festivals. What has happened to Yahuwah's separation? Has man, through tradition, combined Yahuwah's two festivals? Yahuwah never intended Passover to be observed on Abib 15. Exodus 12, 6. And it shall be kept by you till the 14th of this month. And they shall eat the flesh in this night, roast with fire, and they shall eat unleavened bread with bitter herbs. We will now look at the carnage to Yahuwah's statutes that is caused by observing the Passover on Abib 15, according to sunset Let's look at both festivals and see if sunset theory can accomplish fulfilling the commanded eight cycles of eating unleavened bread as it is written in Exodus 12, 18. On the left, you'll see cycle zero. Why do I call this cycle zero? Sunset changes Abib 14 to the 15th. They are commanded to eat 
the lamb at night. So if they have butchered the lamb or sacrificed the lamb on Abib 14 and they're to eat it at night, it then becomes Abib 15. So they have not eaten the lamb on Abib 14. No unleavened bread, no or no Passover meal, no unleavened bread on Abib 14. That's why I call this cycle zero. The Passover meal has not been started yet. There has been no consumption of unleavened bread on Abib 14. Why? Abib 14 cannot be counted as one of the days for eating unleavened bread because sunset changes the date to Abib 15 before the meal is eaten after sunset. Is Exodus 12, 1 to 11 going to be ignored? Let's count days for eating unleavened bread on the next slide and see if we are satisfied. Continuing our attempt to fulfill all the verses of Exodus 12 completely. Again, there's cycle zero. No, there's been no Passover meal eaten. Here we are. Passover eaten on Abib 15 night, for which there is no scripture. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, what happened to the seven? If you read Exodus 12, 18, it says, until the 21st day of the month in the evening. That is when we are commanded to eat unleavened bread. Until the 21st day in the evening. Sunset theory dictates that the sunset changes the day. So when the 20th cycle has finished and the sunset occurs, it then becomes the, 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 uh, the 21st. If we are only commanded to eat, until, or to eat unleavened bread until the 21st day of the month in the evening. The evening starts immediately when the sun has set. So there's no need by direct command to eat unleavened bread here. Because it says up until this point. So at this point, we only have six cycles of eating unleavened bread. That doesn't even fill the commands in Exodus 12 for that's speaking specifically about the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Why? Because it, this, is, this has been chopped off, and this has been chopped off. So there's actually two days that have been cut off of eating unleavened bread, if you go strictly by the words of, this, of the scriptures. And there you are, one, two, three, four, five, six. You only have six days of eating unleavened bread. When the 20th day, or no, with the 20th day stopping at the sunset, and the 21st day, beginning at twilight, it is not necessary to eat unleavened bread after this point, according to the words of the scripture, according to sunset theory. This contaminated system re only requires six cycles for eating unleavened bread. Is it possible for the Israelites to sacrifice the lamb approximately 21 hours after the Passover meal of Abib 14 night season? and still eat the Passover lamb with unleavened bread? No. There is a serious disconnect here somewhere. The scriptures show in two locations the Passover is on the 14th cycle. Then, the unleavened bread festival begins on the 15th of the month. Numbers documents the same separation as well. Can someone read this verse, these verses for me, please? Uh, Numbers 28, 16, and in the first month, on the 14th day of the month, is the Passover to Yahuwah. Numbers 28, 17, and on the 15th day of this month is a feast. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. The Passover, any of it, cannot be observed on the 15th of the month. Sunset theory has failed. Now let's look at the dawn option and see if there is scriptural alignment for this puzzle. 
Could the Israelites eat the lamb with unleavened bread on a beep 14th? When looking at the, thank, thank, <laughs> thank you, Sylvia. When looking at the next slide, I will ask you to be acutely aware of the acclaimed change of cycle that occurs at the sunset according to sunset theory. What effect does the sunset have on the cycles of the week according to man? Are we within our allowances to remove cycles of the week as we see fit? Does Yahuwah turn his face and accept our readjustment of his statutes? Can you justify the facts on the next slide relating to the outright rejection and or contamination of the scriptures? If not, what is your next step? And here's an outline of what has happened to the scriptures. Exodus 12, 6 to 8 is rejected by sunset theory. Exodus 12, 12 to 14 is rejected by sunset theory. Exodus 12, 16, rejected by sunset theory. Exodus 12, 18, rejected by sunset theory. Exodus 12, 24, rejected by sunset theory. Exodus 12, 42, incredibly convoluted by sunset theory. In a very quick glimpse of the Torah, the above scriptures have been rejected and trampled upon by human feet in just the Passover feast alone. What will happen when we begin to investigate the Shabbat topic? Will it expose the same results? Let's recapture the Passover and unleavened bread festivals in a dawn starts the day chart. This is a reminder there is a solution that it's achieves complete fulfillment of all the commands and statutes for the Passover festival and unleavened bread. This is basically a repeat slide from, or from slide 23. Once again, compared to the two festivals, will the dawn format accomplish fulfilling eight cycles of eating leavened bread, unleavened bread as it is written in Exodus 12:18? Passover will be eaten on Abib 14 night season. And there is your cycle number one, Abib 14. Passover eaten on that night, roasted with fire with unleavened bread. Abib 14. Cycle number one, plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Your seven days of unleavened bread. You add the feast of Passover to unleavened bread, and what do you get? Eight. There is your eight cycles of eating unleavened bread, completely from the scriptures. Exodus 12, 18. Until the 21st day of the month in the evening. So there is your eight days of eating unleavened bread. And you can only accomplish that when you start the day at dawn. The scriptures reveal an eight-cycle schedule for consuming unleavened bread during both the Passover and unleavened bread festivals. This schedule is easily achieved when abiding by Yahuwah's dawn start of the day format from creation. Charlene, you want to go do these? <clears throat> Yeah, as soon as it comes up, is this Charlene, going to be a little review? What? Yes. Yeah, okay. Can I share real quick? Maybe we'll see. This is what Rich had, not opposite what I had. I, I think the confusion in we have seven days of the Festival of Unleavened Bread, and then we have the Memorial of Passover, but we have eight days of eating unleavened bread, is the confusion in that it, it kind of rectifies all the scriptures that we begin eating unleavened bread on Passover evening, but there's still only seven days of the Feast of Unleavened. So that's kind of making all of these scriptures mesh. So we have eight cycles, yes, but still only seven days of unleavened. 
Yes. You got, he got yes. It. Yes, that's right. Um, and it, it doesn't tell us that we're eating um, unleavened bread for the full 24 hours of Passover. Um, it's just saying that on the cycle of Passover is when we begin eating unleavened bread with the Passover um, meal that night. It begins at that night. So I was thinking about your other question. Um, uh, it sounded like you were looking for a full, complete, 24-hour um, cycles of eight days. It's, it's not that way. It's that unleavened bread is eaten on eight different cycles. It doesn't have to be a full 24 hours on the eight cycles. I don't know if that helps clear it up or not. No, actually, yeah, it, it does. I wasn't seeing that until Rich pointed that out. It's that, that it's too different. It's not the same feast, even if we do start eating the unleavened bread on, at Passover. That's right, yes. Yes, that's right. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yeah. And, and uh, what's happening here between Passover and unleavened bread is a similar situation as what happens at atonement. Um, here at Passover, we are starting to um, starting the unleavening process the night before unleavened bread starts. Uh, for Yom Kippur, we and we for those that are doing a fast of no food and no drink, um, we are starting that fasting process before we get to the Day of Atonement on the tenth day. So there's similarities here between Passover and Day of Atonement, and they both include. Um, eating or not eating. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure if that helps either. But anyway, this is just a review. Uh, we had these slides at the beginning, so we're just going to look at these slides and see that we've resolved this conflict. Uh, Exodus 12, verses 15 to 16, the count was for seven days. And then when we read in Exodus 13, 6 to 7, we found that the count was seven days. And the same thing for Leviticus 23, 5 to 8. So these three scriptures only give you a count of seven days um, of eating unleavened bread. In Exodus 12, 18, it gave us an eight-day count because the command there, and only in this verse, says you are to eat unleavened bread beginning on the 14th day of the month. So you have an extra cycle there that you're eating unleavened bread. And I don't remember, um, I, I don't know if you all remember, that we did say it was important to know how to count. When you're studying calendar, you have to know how to count. And uh, Tim and I have had to count on our fingers many times to figure this out. So, um, you know, this is one of those uh, hermeneutic principles in calendar of we have to learn how to count, how to number our days. If you look at my hands, I have very short fingers from counting them too much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Charlene, you want to read this one? Oh, sure. I just have to wait for it to come up because my internet isn't fast like yours, oh, okay. and it is coming. Here is a proof quote of significance. I hope you find it very interesting. You can see the, um, the quote at the bottom where it's from. It says, the most important in this festival was the Passover day, the 14th of Nisan. In it they ate unleavened bread, probably like the Jews, eight days through. There is no trace of a yearly festival of the resurrection among them. The Christians of Asia Minor appealed in favor of their Passover solemnity on the 14th Nisan to John. So that's going way, way back when uh, John the Revelator was still alive. It reports that they were unleavened bread for eight days. I have a question there. It says uh, the most important in this festival was the Passover day, the 14th of Nisan not the 14th of Aviv. I'm wondering uh, where they got that from. Well, go ahead, Tim. That, that is, I, I guess we can, should I designate that as a pagan name? I, I don't know. It's not, it's not a scriptural name, I can say that much. It is not, we, we do not find that name in the scriptures anywhere. Yeah, yeah all the names but, of months are not found. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tim, Carol, Carol has a comment. Well, 
in Matthew, if you go to the the Brit in Matthew twenty six seventeen, it says, "Now the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Yahusha, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover?" So that kind of ties into Passover is the most important festival. And in this festival, we don't eat unleavened bread. So therefore, they celebrate the festival of Passover throughout the whole week, continuing in those statutes of no, I don't know, I'm just saying that might fill in with that paragraph up or that sentence where the Passover is the festival. I don't know, because I'm just looking at Matthew 7, 26, 17, and it says the same thing in Mark 14, 12. Yeah, I, I I kind of do the same myself. Like when, when we do our feasts, I say, well, we're, we're going to Passover. You come to Passover, I mean, very, very rarely will I say, well, I'm going to unleavened bread. It's it's always, I always reference it as Passover because to me, that is the, uh, what's that word? And i not too good with words, pen, penultimate, penultimate or something. It, it is the, the epitome of importance as far as, as far right. as my learning is. Pen penultimate, I think, is what it is. The it, ultimate. It, it's the pinnacle of our salvation, as you know. That's that's right. okay. Mm -hmm. It is the most important day, but yes, uh, and, but we do definitely eat unleavened bread through it, and uh, uh, the wave sheaf is probably probably the the most important day. Well, it, with, in my mind, beyond any shadow of a doubt. The wave sheaf day is the most important day of unleavened bread festival. And it also says in twenty six twenty, it says, "Now when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve, and as they did eat." I mean, I'm very, I'm very glad you brought that up. I think that's terrific because if anybody wants to see. Uh, a study on that through or from the Hebrew edition of Matthew. I'll send it out to anybody who wants it. And believe me, it is interesting. Okay. <laughs> Sign me up for that one. Yeah, put me down for the copy too. Yeah. Hey, Tim, I have a question. <laughs> I have a, a question on that, the, this passage you just brought up. Yes. In reading mine, it shows the words that were that are added to the text. And it says, now on the first day of unleavened bread. But the word day is added. So on the first of unleavened bread, to prepare the Passover, it would be that's the first of the unleavened bread they begin eating, not necessarily meaning it's the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Yes. It's yeah, the first of the unleavened bread. So it, it, And that would be in conjunction with what you, you just took us through. Yep. <laughs> yep. Very, very good. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a, that's, a, that's an extremely good study. It's very, very interesting. I, I enjoyed that one quite a bit. Yeah. Um, how, what are we doing for time here, Mario? We're doing good, Tim. Yeah. Okay. We can finish. Oh, yeah, we have some time. I, I was wondering on the, um, I know that you're going to send me this slide, uh, uh, PDF, so I could get it out to everyone on that, new, on that weekly. Yeah. And if you could send the PDF that you just mentioned, uh, we'll put that link in there on the weekly uh, review as well. Okay. Um, I know that there'll be a slight update because uh, 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 Charlene's going to change that one slide. But I had noticed uh, the possibility of another change on the slide. I can talk to you about that later. But, uh, okay. Or, Very good. Uh, yeah, I just, it looked like the wrong address for what you were yeah, very good. I, I appreciate the correct, uh, corrections. I really do. It's on the slide just before the first uh, one that says uh, zero circle. So, you know, if you can just kind of put that to memory. Okay. Or, yeah, very good. We'll, we'll go over that later on. Or cycle, yeah, cycle zero. I'm sorry. Cycle, yeah. yeah on the slide just before that, I think. Um, before I continue on, and what, what we have is a uh, just a, a scriptural explanation of the difference between between dawn or no the time period between the very first eyelashes of dawn and sunrise. We got to, just going through a couple of scriptures of that. 
but before I move on, I would also I would like to ask if anyone would like to go back to that uh, that uh, screen that shows why it is that the statutes cannot be fulfilled with Sunset Theory Day or program. Does anybody want to see that slide again? Yes, please. Uh, now I gotta find it. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm? Nope. Come on. I'm not too good at this stuff. It's just have a little bit of patience with me here. There it is. Yeah. Uh, while you're looking for it, I want to mention, Tim, uh, just a shout out, a thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, my, my pleasure, Mario. Honestly, really. When I, when I first when I first uh, started making this, this, well, this study, not the, the PowerPoint, but the study, when I discovered what I, dis what I did discover in here, I remember, I remember getting up and walking around the house and I, I, uh, I couldn't sit down. I was so excited and I, I just, I, I, I was walking around, I knew what I discovered, I know what I saw and I, I couldn't believe what I saw and I just, I couldn't sit down, I just had to walk because I was so excited about it. Uh, is this okay? Sunset. This is the reason why that sunset theory cannot fulfill the words of Exodus 12. Sunset. I'm going to go with my little thing here. Sunset changes a bead 14 to a bead 15 right here. That is what they declare. So when the when the lamb the Passover lamb is butchered or, or sacrificed, I guess is a more appropriate word, when it is sacrificed at ninth hour from dawn, right here, and it is cooked. It takes hours to cook it. Mario, you probably know about that. It takes hours to cook it. The sunset passes and it turns into Abib 15. It is impossible that that the Passover meal is eaten on a bead 14. There is no Passover meal, there is no lamb flesh eaten on bead 14, and neither is there unleavened bread eaten on a bead 14. And that is in direct, uh, direct opposition to Exodus 12. So this is your first cycle that has been removed. That is a requirement that Yahuwah uh, commanded us. And Sunset Theory removes that. The Passover is then eaten on Abib 15 night. And there is no scripture that I know of personally that tells us to eat the Passover meal on Abib 15 night. I, do, I believe it does not exist. I've been looking for it for years, and I just can't seem to find it. And here is your other days of unleavened bread, where you're eating unleavened bread. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. There is the sunset. And Exodus 12, 18. I, I'll read. Boy, oh, I, I changed my, my page here. Somebody want to read Exodus 12, 18 in its entirety, please? Exodus 12, 18? Yes. In the first month, on the 14th day of the month, at even, we shall eat unleavened bread until the one and twenty-first day of the month at even. Evening. Okay. Uh, the the first part of, of verse eighteen says, "In the first, on the fourteenth day of the month, in the evening." When is the evening on the fourteenth day? Okay. This is the evening on the 15th day in sunset theory because the sunsets change it this is where the evening is the scripture tells us we're supposed to eat uh, unleavened bread with the lamb at in evening right here that is the evening of the 14th right here so this day is deleted sunset theory removes this disobeys yahoo's command and drags us over in our in tradition 
to here. This is a traditional meal right here. Then we go to the last part of the verse. It says, uh, ye shall eat unleavened bread until the 21st day of the month in the evening. So go over to the 21st. Here's your sunset. Here is your evening. The sunset changes, the, or the sunset moment changes the day very quickly, and evening starts immediately. So the scripture tells us we are to eat unleavened bread until, that means up, on, up to this point. We are required to eat unleavened bread up until the point of evening on the 21st. So anything beyond this point, we are not required by command to eat unleavened bread. So technically, you only have six days of commanded eating of unleavened bread because the sunset has cut off this uh, 21st. So you have the 14th over here cut off, and you have the 21st cut off. So there's two days that are, can I use the term, ripped off from Yahuwah? His, his statutes and commands are ignored, deleted, made obsolete, and, and just removed. And that is why that, uh, that is why I believe that sunset theory cannot fulfill the statutes and commands of Passover. It just does not work. If That is, if you want to obey the words as they are written, if you are a stickler for accuracy, then, then it, it's just too difficult. Yeah. And so what you're doing right now is, is showing why it can't work. Yes. Showing why the two days are removed. Why there's only six days of eating unleavened bread in Sunset Theory. As opposed to Exodus 12, 18, where there's eight cycles of eating unleavened bread. Question? Yes. But it says in verse 19, seven days there shall be no leaven found in your house. For whoever eats what is leaven, that person shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel. So yes. where's the seven days come in? That is your seven days of unleavened bread. I'll tell her afterwards. She just got in, Tim. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry. The seven, this is your seven days. You're looking at the screen, are you? Yeah. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. And there should be a seven up here, but there's not for reasons I've just gone through. This, this is your seven days or seven cycles where there's not supposed to be unleavened bread in your abode. There is no rule that I know of, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but there is no rule that says that you cannot have leavened bread in your house on Passover. Yes, you are supposed to eat unleavened bread at your Passover meal, but I do not know of a rule that says that you cannot have leavened bread in your house at that time. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I want to um, just throw this out there. This is just kind of an idea uh, just coming to me right now. Yes. Uh, on the 15th day, um, we were to eat um, until the 21st day unleavened bread at evening, for, or from, from even to evening, right? Yes. So on the 15th day, on the day of unleavened bread, um, that day, the original one, they were loading up uh, everything and taking it with them, and uh, they didn't have uh, uh, leaven even for their bread. Um, they were packing up and getting out of Dodge, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so they didn't have to worry about there being any leaven around them because uh, they were on a on a trip and uh, they didn't have a cupboard full of bread. That's right. <clears throat> yeah, it was done automatically, and it's it's <laughs> it's the same with uh, uh, with uh, looking to the moon, sun, moon, and stars. If we pay attention to Yahuwah's words, He has a built-in system to prevent us from from uh, worshiping the sun, the moon, and the stars. 
And it's the same with, with this unleavened bread. He had a built-in system to prevent the Israelites from having leavened bread on that day when they left. They, they couldn't do it. They had to have leavened bread or unleavened bread. It's that simple. Okay, I'm going to get through this again. This is, this is the, the day starting at dawn. Passover, okay, the, the Abib 14 starts at dawn right here, exactly as Genesis 1 outlines many, many times. Dawn starts here. A B14 is the 24-hour period right here. Your lamb is slain right here. The Passover meal is right here. Mario has spent all this time cooking his lamb right in here. We can eat the Passover meal with unleavened bread on that night, the 14th, with unleavened bread. So that's cycle number one plus your days of unleavened bread. There is your seven days of unleavened bread right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we are to be eating the unleavened bread until the 21st day of the month in the evening. There is your eight cycles. And that is why that only starting the day at dawn can fulfill Yahuwah's commands for Passover. All of them. Very good. What's, yeah, what's, we, the, what's, what's the number to this slide? Uh, 44. Thank you. It's yeah. also on slide 23. That was the review of slide 23 that we had done at the beginning. Yes. Yeah, so what we, Tim did is he showed you slide say, 23. Oh, sorry, Mario. No, I was, uh, Tim, I was just going to say that when we get the, the uh, PDFs, the, um, they're already be laid out for us. Uh, uh, we'll you know, be dropping them in one at a time like that. So it's really nice that we get to see it visually like this on the PowerPoint. Anybody who wants this PowerPoint can have it. It's yours. Please take it and show it to as many people as are breathing. Well, they would have to get it from you directly um, because I can't upload it. Uh, those, those that want my want my email, you can get it from Mario. Yeah, not a problem. I'll, I'll send you all of them because I, I myself, I like to promote the PD or the PowerPoints because they make it so much easier to understand. It's a lot prettier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Timothy at uh, torchofthetribes dot com, right? Yes. Um, maybe we can go on and finish the last few slides, um, Tim, if you want to bump up to um, slide number 47. There's only a few left, and then um, we can take the rest of the questions later. Oh, 47? 47, yeah. That was sort of a summary. Go oh, yeah. back to. Okay, there's 47. Questions? There was one single factor that made the difference in this comparison study. What was it? Answer. Choosing dawn to start Yahuwah's cycles of the week. Where did the concept of dawn starting Yahuwah's cycles come from? Yahuwah. The, <laughs> good answer. The very basic format of creation exposed in Genesis 1 is the concept that makes the sunset theory a kaleidoscope of confusion transform into a beautiful picture of salvation with the, that I should have had, with the dawn design application to it. Yahuwah started this earth at dawn, and the next day ended at dawn, and there was seven of those to set the pattern. This format is known as dawn design for the covenant calendar. By accepting the word as it is written, the confusion is banished from Yahuwah's word. When choosing to worship Yahuwah, may it be according to his words. 
The basic theme of this study has focused on the suggested time change from the sunset event and the fallacy attached to it. This picture on this very slide can also be seen to depict dawn just before sunrise. Let's look at this picture with the dawning of the day in our minds and adjust our minds so we can exchange our erroneous traditions to begin a new chapter. To worship Yahuwah according to his plan is my desire for each and every one who is willing. Earlier the question was asked, where do the scriptures provide the distinction between the orders to consume unleavened bread during the festival of unleavened bread and the feast of Passover? We discovered this distinction is given through the Genesis 1 reckoning of the commencement of each cycle at dawn. There is a difference between dawn and sunrise to be noted. Let's investigate the difference between dawn and sunrise as given in the scriptures. Charlene, you want to read this? Sure. Genesis 19, 15 to 23. We're just going to do one verse here. And when morning, Shakar, dawned, the messengers urged Lot to hurry, saying, Get up, take your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. And Lot pleads for time in Genesis 19.20. He says, look, please, this city is near enough to flee to, and it is small. Please let me escape there. It is not a small matter, and let my life be saved. So we are talking about a twilight mixture, and you have your sunrise right there. In Genesis 19.23, it says this, the sun had risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zor. There's your twilight mixture in the morning. There's the eyelashes of dawn. And I, man, I wish I could remember that verse. I think it's in Jeremiah. But there's the eyelashes of dawn start right there. This is your twilight mixture. And this is when the sun rises. This is when your Sabbath starts right here. When those eyelashes of dawn, when the first light stretches into the sky on that dark horizon, this is where your Sabbath starts. And if I'm understanding right, this twilight mixture, that can also be referred to as the word rev in our... Yes. That is one of the, one of the rev mixtures that the lamb is supposed to be or supposed to have been slain between. Next witness. That's a, that's a pretty picture. Let me see that again. That's nice. I like that. Genesis 32, 24. And Yaakov was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the what? The breaking of the day. Genesis thirty-two twenty-six, And he said, let me go for the day breaks. But he said, I am not letting you go until you have berech me, or blessed. Who are these two he's? There's one he right here, and there's one he right here. Who is this one? Who said? Elohim said. Elohim told us with his very own voice that is recorded in scriptures, it was dawn and the day was breaking. This is the beginning of your day, exactly like creation is recorded. It is the twilight mixture of the day, the morning twilight mixture. And Yaakov called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen Elohim face to face and my life is preserved. And the sun rose on him as he passed over Penuel, and he limped on his hip. This is your difference between the eyelashes of dawn when the very, very first start of the next 24-hour period begins, right here. Then we have the twilight mixture. This is when the roosters love to wake you up. And here's your sunrise. 
<clears throat> My friend Yahuwah has just told us with his own instruction in Genesis 19, 15, and 23, and Genesis 32, 26, exactly when his 24-hour cycle starts and ends. If you know this, you can calculate the number of days allotted for eating unleavened bread during the Passover festival. There is no conflict. Questions and comments? Great presentation, Tim. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that was wonderful. In the Matthew study, do you do you address some of the passages in Luke too about the Passover and the and unleavened bread? Because because some of these scriptures, and I think this is what throws it off, is it says, "And then came the first day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb." was to be sacrificed. Well, that's not right. And then before that, it says, now the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is called Passover. It's not called Passover. So there's some confusion in that. Does that, does your study cover those? Also? Yes, it addresses it very, very well. Okay. And if it doesn't, if you have more questions, please let me know and I will improve the study. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And thank you for this one, it was wonderful. Very, very welcome. It's my pleasure. It's, I, I'm, I'm thrilled to do this. The amount of help that Charlene has given me is absolutely incredible. And uh, she has a lot of patience with me because sometimes I'm kind of like a, like a I won't say. <laughs> um, I have a question for Neil in Western Australia. Yes. Neil, what time is it there? Is it Saturday morning? Uh, Saturday morning, yes it is. Thank you for your help with um, sorting that out for me because I had it coming up in my calendar on um, on Friday mornings at 9.30. And uh, I wasn't able to sort of find out when it was, so I've just been catching up with the um, the, the emails that were sent afterwards. So thanks a lot for your help with that. I appreciate well, it. We are blessed to have you speaking to us from the future. Yes. From <laughs> our future, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talk about confusing the days, right? I mean, this right. is crazy. Glad you're here. Glad you made it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, Tim? Yes. Okay, I got a few. Second delay. I got two seconds, two to five second delay. And when you were doing the slides tonight, you had a two second to a five second delay. So we were hearing the words, but we weren't seeing them. And also, too, I think I've been studying this presentation now for five to six years. And this is the night that I think I finally got it. This was one of the hardest presentations. It was really a hard one for me to grab. And and tonight, we got in there, baby. We got in there. <laughs> nice. Praise Yahuwah. Praise Yahuwah. This is what it's all about. Now, you say that I was speaking and the, the words weren't on the screen yet. Well, with Danan, with Danan and Charlene, they both live in the nowhere land, Booney land. Uh, no interception. Uh, Danan... Uh, was blessed to, they have a uh, ante uh, what's it called? antenna uh, that you guys put out or that some neighbor chopped down a tree and put a antenna up and so he was able to get some basic internet but it's still not very you know not very strong yeah, I, Tim I didn't notice a five second delay so okay. I think it must be Dan and computer okay yeah. thank you we're dead. I'll just deal with it. I'm okay with it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So uh, watch the video. You won't see the delay there, I hope. Praise yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So Thank you. It, just Thank to make sure, um, if anybody wants this on, on uh, PowerPoint, they can contact you at uh, torahtothetribes.com. Timothy at torahtothetribes.com, right? Yes. And then, uh, and they'll get it on the PowerPoint with all the little drop-ins and all that. Yeah. That, that, that'd be great. Um, and, Charlene? Um, Tim, you were going to send out a study to um, Mario and Carol Bourne. Uh, do you know the name of that study? So that I can get you their address, uh, her address, her email address. Do you know, is it a word? document or a PowerPoint? 
it's it's a PDF. It's a PDF, and it's like, oh, did Yahushua eat the Passover meal with his disciples? I, I think that's what it, the title is. Okay, I haven't looked at it for a bit. It's it's an it's an older PDF, and it needs to be put into a PowerPoint. <laughs> Yeah, I would like to. Tim, was that part of the uh, first thing you sent out when you had like about four or five attachments? Is that one of them? I I doubt it. I doubt it. Okay, because I'd like to get it to Charlene. I, I don't um, anybody? Yeah, anybody that has the DVD, it's going to be on there. So, um, uh, Carol, I sent you the DVD. Uh, so oh, I, I it, it'll be on there. Oh, that's another thing for people that don't know about the DVD. Uh, Charlene, can you mention that? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, um, uh, we have we have all of the studies um, on a disc, therefore reading only on the computer. Uh, there's many that are in Word documents, but there's many PowerPoints as well. And we'll, we update that every uh, spring and fall festival. So. Um, the new ones will get added on, but we needed to do a little bit of editing on a few of them when we have some time, but that they've got everything, everything we've ever done. There's lots of material to keep you busy for a couple of years. So if you can't find something, we'll, we'll tell you how to find the studies on the disc. And how do we get the disc, Charlene? Uh, just uh, send me your address, just email me your address, and I'll just pop it in the mail. Okay, and your address is? Charlene at TorahTribes.com. Uh, okay, got mm -hmm. it. Thank you. Yeah. Did, Charlene, did you say there, uh, the DVD is only um, viable through a laptop or your computer? Yeah, just not for your TV. I have it on a DVD just wow. because they're cheaper than CDs. But you need to put it into your computer or your laptop. Or well, if you I, don't I, have a drive in your Yeah, I don't because my IT guy rebuilt my rebuilt this computer and I don't have that option. Yeah, so Well, you can buy you can buy an extended little gadget that that can plug into okay. your um, whatever uh, laptop or computer that. like a you know a little disk, a little disk drive and I think sure. they're about thirty or forty dollars okay yeah. and and you know what we're always like three years or four years behind with the technology <laughs> we just got this out now they're building laptops without the drives so um, yeah but there okay. is there is some options good thank you so is there an option for um for that DVD content to be put into a like a, a Google Drive or something like that so it can be shared online? Because that way we'd be able to download uh, the content ourselves having to post some discs. Yes, unfortunately a lot of um a lot of the PowerPoints when we build them and put them into a PDF, they're very large files and I'll be here ten hours doing it on a Google Dropbox because there's so many. So, um, Neil, send me your address and I will ship one down. You'll have it probably in two weeks. No worries. Thank you, love. Um, actually, Neil, um, actually, Neil, are you uh, acquainted with um, Daryl and Ju Julie? Daryl and Julie down there in Queensland? Oh, okay. I, because I sent them one um, here a couple of weeks ago. Two thousand, two and a half thousand kilometers away from them, at least on the other side of Australia. Okay. 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 Yeah. Just, um, just send me your address. I'll send it down. I will do. Thank you. Does anybody know if Google Docs has like some limit? Uh, you, like you have to buy space. Uh, can you fill it up, or is it like on a? You no. You have to buy. You have to buy space. You can get a, a small amount for free on Google Drop or on Dropbox, but you have to um, expand it. And with the amount and the size of the files that these guys have, um, you'd have to buy more space. Right. At least a gigabyte for free. Though. At least a gigabyte for free, if not more. That's mm -hmm. a fairly. It's, it's a lot of space. More, it, more than what Dropbox. Yeah. If you if you delete something that was in Dropbox and someone clicks on that link, will it be like gone? It won't come up for them anymore. 
the, the author decides who to share it and how to share it, whether it's public or whether it's only by link to people, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Learning every day. That's it. <laughs> yeah. This, this was really good uh, for me, Tim. It brought back a lot of memories. Uh, we would go and get a lamb on the 10th day of the month. And we did this for years and years. And every year we go through the same question. It's like, okay, now if we do this at even and we'd all be out there and the kids would see the first flicker of the stars and all that bit. And um, we would, you know, get to work, right? And then, uh, but the thing is, is that because we thought evening, it's now the 15th. So then we started thinking, well, maybe we should do it on the 13th. And then that way, uh, you know, but you're not supposed to keep it until uh, morning, um, so that would change the date on us. And so no matter how we shook a stick at it, it was jacked up. It was a miserable nightmare. And um, we just had to say, okay, well, at least we're doing it, and, um, and that's all anybody could say. And we, we were talking about three full-grown men hanging this thing up after we you know, um, got them ready to skin them and to take it off and then to be careful not to break any bones. That was a big thing because it'd be easier if you could just start snapping some bones, but, you know, didn't want to do that. And, you know, and yet you have to take out that little trach part that makes the meat poison. If you, if, if you cook it with that in there, then, you know, that'll make you sick. So you had to take that part out and not break its neck. And I mean, it, you know, and then put all the, you know, innards on the, you know, uh, uh, in the same area that was cooking, but in its own uh, little section. And, you know, dig a hole, for, uh, uh, you know, pour the blood in the hole. All, all that business, man, to do that in the dark was, I mean, we had flashlights everywhere. We had floodlights everywhere. And it was a, a real challenge. And and uh, uh, I'm glad, you know, now at this point we, you know, recognize that uh, Yahusha was our lamb, so we don't do lamb anymore. Um, Mario, how long did it take you to cook a lamb when you did that? Uh, you mean from skinning them to putting them on the spit to uh, rotating them and all that? The whole yeah, from, process? From slaughter to on your plate. Uh, just to cook it, what? From slaughter to on your plate. Oh, from slaughter to on our plate was about, well, we got to be pretty good at it. We could do it in about four hours, you know. About five hours. Or, yeah, somewhere in there. Mario, you can be uh, accredited to be the new priest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, praise God that we're all priests now in uh, Yahusha under our high priest, right? So, right. It was. It was it's a learning something. experience, that's for sure. I'm ashamed and embarrassed, uh, but uh, we need to walk through it. Yeah. There's, there's, there's no need to be ashamed about it. Uh, it's an experience you went through. You learned an awful lot from it. Uh, and you can share that with others. I, I think yeah. it, I, you know, one thing that I did get out of it, probably the most valuable was the very first year that we did it because I'd never killed anything before. And I never uh, knew what that would feel like. And it came kind of gave me a reference to, I mean, I can't compare to the loss of a child or your only begotten son that came you know, that Abba allowed this to happen to. I can't express what Abba felt when he lost, uh, or when uh, Yahushua gave himself. But I did get a taste of um, of what that death thing was about, and I don't ever want to kill another animal. I couldn't eat. You know, people, when my dog was sick, I had to hold his back legs up to help him go to the bathroom. And people said, Mario, just put that dog down. I'm like, I can't. I got to take them somewhere else and have somebody else do it. I I just ah didn't do it. Uh, I find it interesting, Mario, your um, testimony. And my question to you is: when you were trying to figure out how to how to uh, cook this lamb and on the right day and all that stuff, and it was just so confusing to you, did it ever cross your mind that the a calendar study would solve all these questions? Well, we would have a calendar study every year regarding this, and then as a group, we would kind of come together with, are we going to, let's do it this year, let's try it on the 13th, and that didn't work, you know, either. so, uh, yeah, I mean, we went through it, and we thought we were doing everything, you know, 
between the evenings, our idea of between the evenings was during that sunset period is when we would put them down, which meant we were doing everything else in the dark. But now we're on the 15th, so we didn't get to eat it on the 14th, you know. Yeah, and, yeah, and that's, that's also what I was taught, that Ben Ha'avarim means, be, you know, after the sun goes down, the sunset period. I was taught that as well. So it makes a great difference when you do the two mixtures from dawn to sunset. You know, and it also goes in line when uh, Yeshua said, my commandments are not grievous. It's like, you mean I had all day I could have been doing that? The whole time from evening to evening? <laughs> I mean, seriously? <laughs> I mean, boy, that would have like lightened up the load a lot. And then we could just prepare dinner and know that we're to eat it in the evening. No big thing. There's, there's a heavy yoke. Even the fathers couldn't keep. That's that verse. Yes, and, and that, That's that verse comes in. My burden is light. Yes. Yeah. He says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And he meant it. And it, man that's corrupted it and made it so confusing and burdensome. All of man's traditions that they have told. Uh, turned into Torah truth. That's what we're finding is man's Torah is not Yah's Torah. That, that verse, my burden is light. I think there's different ways of looking at or of understanding it. From all the research I've done with the calendar, I believe he's saying my burden is light, and he has come with on with with his burden, his heart, his his pain in his heart is for us to look to the light. Not not through the darkness, yeah. but I also believe that yeah. yes, his burden is light, not heavy. And heavy when we look at the light, when we understand his words, we are in the light. We are children of the light. Light, not the sun, the moon, and stars. We are children of light. Look to the light. Amen. I think Danan was trying to say something. Hey, thank you. When I started keeping the feast. I don't know, about 10 years ago, um, there was a feast group that I went to, and we would have the unleavened bread start that evening along with the Passover meal. And then we wash dishes till 12 o'clock at night. What's wrong with this picture? You know, and I continued going to the feast, you know, for I fellowship with that camp for a long time, and I still love them. But I can't, I can't, I can't do what they do anymore. And Charlene, you know what camp I'm talking about. I don't want to point fingers, but you know this is a this particular study. You can grab your brain around it. It takes a while. It took me for it took me seven years. <laughs> it's a hard one. Gary Hoffman, you've been very quiet lately. Do you have anything you'd like to add? Oh, <laughs> it, this is a blessing. Uh, it's uh, we never participated in. Uh, killing a lamb but me being in the the word trying to figure this out um what comes to mind tonight is we have a merciful long-suffering loving caring compassionate father who just continues to nurture us bring us along the way we wouldn't even be here having this discussion if he wasn't anything but that and uh, uh just to meet others uh it's, at times it's been a lonely road um being the calendar guy uh, amongst all the people in our area. And um, when these things started falling together for me, it was, it was, it was light. The, the load came off, off the shoulders, the, the load that I was responsible or took responsibility and, and believed I'm still believe I'm called to, to participate in um, as I believe you, you all are um, that load um, was there even whether I acknowledged it at the time or not, but I knew his word if it's true if this book we have Can reveal his truth to us. It has to be perfect uh, And this is part of that process of coming to that perfection to see that and to be able to guard his commands um, We can't guard them if we don't we don't know them um, Praise him. There's uh, sacrifice for those um, unknown sins and uh, the desire to do this. It's 
Uh, it's a blessing to sit and, and listen. I'm I'm typically the speaker and talker, and um, in most of our gatherings, and on, especially on this subject. But um, I'm enjoying listening uh, and hearing uh, different perspectives, um, which are lining up with where I am. So it's it's uh, it's easy to listen to um, when we want to know the truth. And I, I just want to encourage those who may be struggling or um, Dan and Dean, is it, uh, who had seven years trying to figure this out and get it. Um, it's worth the fight. It's worth the struggle. It's worth the, the battle to get to that place to get it because it's it does. It answers these questions. Um, it's it's here. It's in the scriptures. So. Thank you, Gary. That was very encouraging. Yeah, I think there's a, a, a lot of a lot of us have gone through some struggles, but we recognize that Yah has called us to something. And um, once we get to a place where we think that we have it or we know it, uh, then that pride starts to keep us from going any further. And that would be a bad place to be in. But I think that he's used a lot of the cycles and circles that we've gone through um, to help mold us and shape us and help us to see and, and to love uh, and respect people that may not have been on that journey yet and they're still walking through it or they've been pulled in that direction. Because I genuinely think that, that the direction that we were going, I wouldn't have done what I was doing had he not called me to some degree to start, you know, honoring those feasts, which I never did before as a pagan. I never did, you know, I didn't even know that they existed because that was some Jewish thing. So I never even investigated about doing it at, at all. Um, but but he but when he you know said come I came I just didn't know uh, that I shouldn't have been following the, the traditions of men and uh, uh, we just didn't know but he used it you know? could could I ask um, a slightly unrelated question but it forms a question in my mind. Okay, on the 14th, when, when, when Moses was gathering the people to leave and all the plagues and stuff were going on, and he told them, you know, to put the blood on the lentils of the door so with the, when the avenging angel passed over, it wouldn't kill their firstborn. Okay, then after that, after... Everybody found out that, oh, my gosh, we've lost every firstborn in Pharaoh's camp. And so they called for Moses and Aaron or whatever. What I guess I'm trying to get at is the question I'm trying to ask is, when did the Is Israelites with Moses leave to begin their journey before they got to the sea and before it was parted and before they were followed by Pharaoh? Was it, was it in the, was it, you know, because the Benjamin angel went over after, at midnight, but there still was some machinations going on with Pharaoh and Moses and all those guys, and they took all their good stuff and all that. So if you're not supposed to do anything on the 15th because it's a high holy day, I always get tripped up and if that was the day they were actually traveling. Um, is it Donna? Um, yeah. If you look in Numbers 33.3, 3, there's other places as well. But it says they departed from Ramses in the first month on the 15th day of the first month, the day after the Passover. It's really, really clear. Um, they were commanded uh, to stay in their in their uh, homes or courtyards or whatever uh, because Yah did not want them traveling at night. They were packing, they were gathering things up, um, they were getting ready to go, but they did not leave until the morning of the 15th. And um, we often, yes, it's, it's called a high Sabbath. John is the only one that calls the 15th a high Sabbath and nobody else does. But I do not believe that because it was called a high Sabbath that it was so 
it was so high and holy that there was just things you could not do. When Yahuwah commanded them to, to get ready to go and move out, um, that was his wish. Um, we yeah. do not find any evidence that he, he had them traveling the on They traveled on the 15th. Yes, on the 15th. We have no evidence that he had them traveling on the weekly Sabbaths um, in the first month or the second month. But they did travel on the first Sabbath of Unleavened Bread. Donna, for three days. Donna, have you seen our PowerPoint uh, Passover Egypt to the Melchizedek Covenant at Sinai? Have you seen that study? No, I don't believe I have, Tim. Uh, that is ultra, ultra important, and it will answer your questions for you very, very clearly. Um, but I, I, I would, you, you um, you, you, you need to you need to get that somehow and go through that slide by slide very very carefully but I would like to read uh, a couple of verses for you right now um, and Charlene had already mentioned this that on on that Passover night they were commanded to stay in their house and I'll read to you Exodus 12 verse 22 and you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two doorposts with blood that is in the basin. And you, none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. Now, if you look, if you look at the, the layout of the houses in a, in a hot climate, their, their sleeping quarters, their uh, cooking quarters, their washing quarters are all in different, different areas. And it's actually a, a courtyard. And I've seen this very, very clearly in Nicaragua. I lived down there for a year and a half. So they have, they have a big courtyard of where they live. So when they were commanded not to go out of their house, as uh, what we know in English, but it's actually, they were commanded not to go out of their courtyards where they live. And if you go to verse 28, it says, And the children of Israel went away and did so as Yahuwah had commanded Moshe and Aharon. So they did. So that confirms to us that they did not leave uh, Mitzrayim on Abib 14. They had to get up in the morning. They had to uh, 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 collect all the valuables from the Egyptians. And the, the Egyptians were very much more than eager to get them out of the country. So they left on the 15th okay. of, 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 uh, of the bead. Yeah, I've always known that they left on the 15th, but I get confused when I try to match that with it being a high holy day when you're not supposed to be doing all that kind of stuff. So well, that was my, that was my yeah. effort. Hey, uh, Donna, that, that video, uh, the journey from Passover to Shavuot is is at the same place where those other calendar club videos uh, on that same YouTube channel. And then also, um, uh, I think at some point, Charlene, I don't know if that was just be between us or if you mentioned it in a teaching that we've already done about how um, the regulations of the Sabbath uh, stay constant on the Sabbath, but the regulations on other feast days don't necessarily apply to those feast days. Uh, did you mention Mario? What you? I'm sorry, I must have missed it. But what YouTube channel are you talking about? Well, um, on those links that we put out each week, that has a video of the previous week, it'll it'll take you to that channel uh, that has the other calendar uh, club teachings. But also on that same channel is the um, the uh, teaching called um, the journey. From Shavuot to, or from Passover to Shavuot, or something. I mean, is there a YouTube name? If I just go to YouTube, what would I type in? Um, you can try Yah's Servant, but I didn't know that that YouTube channel. There's more than one Yah's Servant channel, so uh, yeah, it, might, there is. it might be easier just to type in. Um, now I'll try to get that link to you. I'll. I'll okay. Because I, I know you gave it to us at one time, but I think it's yeah. lit my feeble mind, so. No, no worries. Um, but um, there was a, a difference between the Sabbath uh, regulation, uh, daily regulations for the Sabbath and the other feast dates, I think. Uh, could you touch on that again? We have 
or, oh wow, we only have like a couple, a couple minutes. Um, Thank you, Tim. I, I, can, I can touch on just very, very quickly for you. On the weekly Sabbath, there was absolutely no cooking or baking whatsoever in Exodus 16:23. Moses commanded the people when they had um, picked their double portion of manna on the sixth cycle that they were to do their baking and their cooking on the preparation day so that there would be no, uh, no reason to cook on the Sabbath day. That was a command. On the feast Sabbath, they were allowed to cook food. Um, that, that it was more lax, maybe because they had a lot more people there, I'm not sure exactly, but the command was only that they could prepare food on the feast Sabbath. When we get to the um, when we get to the gospel account of Yeshua's burial, his his death, burial, and uh, preparation for the tomb, where the ladies had to prepare spices, you were not allowed to prepare spices on the unleavened, unleavened bread Sabbath or the high Sabbath. There was only provision for preparing food. So the spices that were prepared after they had seen how he was laid in the tomb, would have been done on uh, the sixth cycle or Friday, the preparation day before the weekly Sabbath. So that, that's some of the distinction there. Uh, like we just figured that out. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of puzzles that you figure out when you go through um, one thing at a time. So does that help a little bit? Yeah, so then in, in other words, it was okay for them to do what they did on a high Sabbath because it was not a weekly Sabbath is kind of what you're saying in terms of it's okay to do, yes it's okay to do it because Yahweh commanded when he commands um, you do it uh, he's not going to break his own statutes another uh, area of interest is the showbread the showbread was baked on Sabbath morning and brought into the holy place on Sabbath morning the showbread, the new showbread was brought in and the old showbread was taken out and eaten that week by the priests. So the showbread was prepared on Sabbath morning and brought into the sanctuary on Sabbath morning. Uh, you and I might consider that work, but um, when it was for the sanctuary for Yah's purpose, he does not consider that as work. So there, there's several different areas where we've looked at it and it's like when he commands it, then He's within his statutes, and we're, our response is to be obedient, and uh, everything that he has says we will do, right? <laughs> and be obedient. Amen. Amen. We, when, you follow, you. when you follow this calendar through from the Passover of Egypt, and you follow it through the year, the, the command to raise the tabernacle in the wilderness on the first day of the second year was on a seventh-day Sabbath. That is work. Oh. But that is Yahuwah's commanded work. So I, I think we have a lot to learn on what we are allowed to do or what or no, what, what we are able to do according to Yahuwah's command. Got it. Thank you. Thank you yeah. both. Um, can someone, uh, because I'm recording this screen, I, I almost messed up. I pushed Google and went to big screen, but I turned it off and went, oh, yeah, I'm recording. I can't do that. Uh, so if somebody... Could type in uh, uh, the YouTube bar um, the Covenant Calendar Journey. If that link comes up, um, could you put it in the chat for Donna? Yeah, I can grab it and put it in there. Uh, um, also, Donna, if you want, if you want that verse that tells us that we're allowed to uh, cook food for immediate use on an on an annual Shabbat. That is uh, Exodus 12, verse 16. And I, I will read it to you. I, yeah, I think you already have. I think okay. we've, didn't we read that earlier somewhere? I think maybe Charlene read it in one of her scriptures or something. But yeah, I, I kind of understand that part. But there was a lot more that they did than just cook food on the 15th. I yeah. mean, they had to collect all that gold and silver and everything from the Egyptians. And then they took off and... Yeah. Were, Food and I mean, there's a lot happening on that on that very first day of unleavened bread. Yeah, well, it, it is it is now after our time space, and they haven't shut us off, so that's cool. So I don't know if that's an automatic thing. Uh, doesn't seem to be because 
we're still here. I mean. <laughs> so maybe you know, we could uh, have a. I show we have two minutes left. left. You show we have what? Two oh, minutes left. Two minutes, yeah. Okay. Would you like to close us in in prayer? Who are you talking Who? to? Uh, Donna. She oh. Sure, I'll I'll give it my best shot. Praise yeah. Okay. Abba Father, we come before you this evening with thanksgiving, praise. And we are so blessed to have Charlene and Timothy who have spent so much time studying this so that they can share it with not only those who already understand how the day works, but those of us who have for years kept evening to evening, and this is all new. They do such a wonderful job, Abba, and we are so thankful for them. We're so thankful for everybody that's on this study and for their input and for their participation. We're thankful for Mario for setting this up and always being here and always being chipper and ready with the word. And so as we go about our evening and we come into our Sabbath, Father, tomorrow morning at dawn, we just ask that you would be with us, bless us all, through your son, Yahushua HaMashiach, our Kohen HaGagal of the Melchizedek Order. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful evening and a blessed Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom Shalom. Shalom Shalom. Shalom. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> shalom Shalom. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Look at that.